This is a large group of pilgrims from South Africa. They're a messianic congregation, Christians who are following a lot of Jewish cultural sensitivity, spiritually, religiously. Very devout people. Last night they spent an hour praying and Bible study and took an altar. With all this cloud, the sun is late. I'm not sure. We we'll probably see a little bit of it, hopefully. <clears throat> That's why I waited for a little longer to give the sun a chance to show its colors. <clears throat> The water is very peaceful and calm. Hello. Somebody is looking for me here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you How today? Are you? <laughs> How are all the pilgrims? Uh -huh. We are on. Oh, you want to wave? There's a group also here from Korea. Korea, yeah. And they are also a very devout group. And they had mass yesterday. But it's so difficult to communicate. They know very little English. And I only know three words in Korean. So, Onyong Hasayo. And Kamsam Nida. But that doesn't help very much for communicating when it comes to practical things. And we did have a little communication challenge yesterday evening. We were taping a new series in, in Dukenaltum on the 12 apostles that's coming soon, so keep your eyes open. And they wanted to use a space that they thought it was reserved and there had been a misunderstanding again because of language, so. But everything worked out fine. We were able to accommodate them and they were able to have their desire. So, part of the world of people coming together from all nations, South Africa, Korea. And if you look at the list that's in Isaiah today, it's the very last chapter of Isaiah. You know, the last words are very important, aren't they? We're in the end of chapter 66 of Isaiah. And the final words are very important because it's a note on which hope is is built, you know, the message is confirmed. It's the last word on the issue. And it's a word of all nations coming to hear the word of God. Nations that had never heard of him before. Tarshish, some people would consider, scholars consider that the most westerly part, maybe Spain, Portugal, on the Mediterranean fringe, you know in the European side and then you have Put and that's considered by some scholars to be uh, East Africa and Lud. Oh I don't remember now but I uh, I'll have to refresh my brain on this. I found a little note about this today. So Lud is, oh yes, it's in the area of Asia Minor. That would have been then, let's say today, Turkey and off up towards the Dead Sea, the, the Black Sea and the, and the Caspian Sea maybe. And then Tubal is also mentioned in Ezekiel, the, also the Black Sea area, the Scythian peoples. And Javan, well, even in Hebrew today, Yavan is, is Greece. So all the places have been 
enriched with the word of God from from the remnant, the dispersion of the Jewish people. And they'll all be gathered back. And the amazing thing there is, the line that's dramatically surprising is that God will take priests, Levites, from the foreign peoples. Not all Israelites could be priests. And now there will be some from the foreign peoples. So there's a, a great window of hope. And we're talking about Isaiah, we're talking about centuries before Christ. That's our friend we met many times before when we'd walk down that road there by the lake. We must go start doing that again soon. Moshe. Moshe requires very little to live. He lives very free and there are obviously lots of challenges in understanding life lived that way. At the end of the day, we're all mutually inter interdependent and we have to help provide for each other. On the other hand, somebody that says, I don't need a big career, I don't need a lot of things to live have a life to be happy that's also a big service to a world that's sometimes very anxious about things but going back to our theme today all the nations will come imagine from Korea right there in front of us in South Africa and I'm from Ireland and all of those who are joining our live stream this morning Malaysia and Australia and Norway and California and the Philippines one human family and this theme continues I, Psalm 87 is a wonderful psalm it's a short psalm it's also a bit mysterious, some of the text, not easy to grapple with, but all peoples born in Jerusalem. It's a way of God's word generating everyone, and God's word generates from Jerusalem. It's not easy for us to be one human family. We see with all the wars, all the conflicts, it's a big challenge. How we long for peace, we know we belong to each other. And then Jesus' message, go out to all the world and tell the good news is our Psalm responsoria line today. And this Psalm, Psalm 117 is the Psalm we chose for the dedication of the archaeological park. We were in the synagogue, so it was read from a cultural point of view in a way. It wasn't a religious ceremony. And the rabbi did us the favor of chanting that psalm. It's only two verses. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. <clears throat> for steadfast is his kindness toward us and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. This is the vision. Isaiah goes through lots of themes in his books and particularly the drama of a people unfaithful going into exile and God's love continuing with them wanting to bring them to great salvation. 
But then in their scattering, they become the vehicle also to bring the good news to everyone. The news of God, to get to know the one true God who created the world, who gave us this bounty and this goodness, whose heart is filled with goodness for us human beings. We always need to return to that big picture. But that big picture passes through, as the letter to the Hebrew shows us today, through a path of, of suffering, a path of discipline, a path of, of choices. Oh, there comes the sun. It comes through a path of, of chastening reining in our passions, our pride. As a father treats his children, so the Lord treats us. He wants us to reach the good. He wants us to mature. Sometimes life is very cloudy and we have a hard time understanding that. This weekend we had a lot of children here I think one day we had 70 children staying here with their families. And there were moments of tears and crying and tantrums. Some very small children, lots of strollers here. At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained in it, to be trained in discipline. And there goes the sun again behind the cloud. And to know that it will come out again. We're not made for cloud and darkness. We're made for light. And we have that hope. And it will emerge again. Sometimes there's a fleeting moment of bright light. And the path of suffering may continue for the cancer patient for the person who is in a difficult marriage relationship, difficulties in business and work and markets and selling and job and earnings. But the sun will come out again. It will come out and shine for all humanity. And Jesus is asking us to choose the narrow gate, that narrow gate of discipline, that narrow gate that is the path of wisdom. And that's totally coherent with his entire message. If you want to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross every day and follow me. And don't be surprised if people will be in heaven that you never expected. What's the biggest surprise you're going to have when you get to heaven? Have you thought about it? Think about the biggest surprise when you get to heaven. The biggest surprise you will have. When that day dawns and that light grows, some will come from the east and the west and the north and the south and sit at the table of Abraham. Don't presume just because you belong to this club or that club. It's not just being inscribed. It's being, it's living the life. And that life is a life also of self-denial, to be charitable, to be kind, to hold back bitterness, to let it be resolved in forgiveness path that's not easy. To choose the lower place, not to be envious when other people have a little glory, when other people are celebrated, when they are noticed and we're neglected and overlooked. The path of humility, path really illustrated by Jesus' life. 
people, God bless you. Thank you for joining on this glorious morning. It's great to have you here. Great to be together at the Sea of Galilee. God bless you. Have a very blessed Sunday today.